Katrina Leskinich, how are you? I'm great, Alex. How are you? I'm really good talking to you because Katrina and the Waves was such a legendary band in my upbringing. And the one thing that Katrina meant to me was I was going to feel good because most of your songs are quite uplifting, aren't they? Well, that is the punchline of the song. Yeah, it's Don't It Feel Good. Um, it's been really nice being associated with such a positive song. And it's it's it keeps coming back. I mean, as long as the sun is going to shine, as long as we're going to have summers, then we're going to have Walking on Sunshine, which is great. You've had huge success in the pop industry and you're back with a brand new album. We're going to talk about that in a moment and we'll play a track from it. Let's talk about your beginnings, though. How did you start getting into the music industry? When I was very young, we always sang as a family. We always sang, um, well, I was brought up quite strictly Catholic. Um, soon got over that, though. You know, all of us Catholic <laughs> girls, we end up rebelling. And we used to sing a lot in the church and sing a lot as a family. There were five girls and one boy in my family. And I was smack dab in the middle, the third girl. And I just kind of gravitated toward music. I loved Fleetwood Mac and Elton John. So I asked my parents for a guitar when I was about 14. They gave me one and I proceeded to drive all of my friends crazy with all my pretty rough renditions of Cat Stevens songs during the lunch break at high school. So where did you go from it being a dream and you and a guitar in a corner to getting the deal? Oh, Alex, it's still a dream. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I uh, got in the band called The Waves, the uh, um, bass player. His name was Vince Delacruz. We were in the church choir together, and we started our own group called Mama's Cooking. And we played around the military bases, and um, I played around, well, they were, uh, I was performing illegally, actually, because I was only 16, and also acting as the, the band's manager, just phoning up these guys on the bass saying, you know, we're an American rock band, and could we come and play? Um, we met up with a couple of English guys in Cambridge, Alex and Kim, and we put uh, the waves together. Somebody said, hey, you've got a girl in the group. You're missing a trick. You know, there weren't that many girl singers in the early 80s. And so we decided we'd call the band Katrina and the Waves so people would know there was a girl in the group, mostly because we were playing on these military bases. And these guys wouldn't have seen a woman for six months. So I came on stage, the green bean that I was, and they started shouting, get them off, get them off. And well, did you? Well, I thought they meant me and, <laughs> and the boys in the band. And I had no idea. So I was starting to get a little hot under the collar. And I took off this jacket that I had on. And no. The, yeah, a huge round of applause. Uh. And I thought, oh, 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 the penny drops. And did you reveal anything else or did you just no. sing the song? No, that was it. I mean, actually, at the time, I thought I was really cool. I was wearing a black jacket with a white shirt and a black skinny tie. So it was more of an androgynous look than a sexy one. But I don't know. I think if you've been in a submarine for six months, you'll take it, however it comes. It doesn't sound too appealing, does the, <laughs> the, the whole idea? You've got a beautiful accent, and I'm such a fan of the Birmingham accent. Was I born in Birmingham? No, I was born in Topeka, Kansas. I wasn't far out. Not too far. <laughs> my father was in the Air Force, and it was always my family's dream to come to England. My mother had, well, we had a Welsh corgi. We had a Manx cat. We grew up on Beatrix Potter. And right. Yeah, you know, Welsh corgis, they don't have the tail, or the tail is it comes off when they're puppy. We used to have people drive past our house in Omaha, Nebraska and shout over. Well, they'd see the dog without the tail and yeah. the Manx cat doesn't have a tail as well. And they'd shout over, y'all shouldn't have done that to them animals. <laughs> and they shake their head and drive off. You're getting visits from the RSPCA, were you? Exactly. But we finally, my mother's dream came true in 1976 when after Germany and Holland, we came here. Tell us about the new album and why you wanted to make it and where people can get it. I had to make this new album because that's what I do. And sometimes it's the last thing you feel like doing, but you know you've got to do one thing to make another thing happen. And it's usually when you're in the studio, you think how great it is to be on tour and be out playing live. When you're out playing live, you always think how great it would be to just be tucked in the studio making an album. 
So it's chicken and egg, but one thing had to be done, and, and I had to record an album. I've been split from the waves for about six years now, and I took, I've taken a selection of songs that I've recorded over the years since the split and stuck them on um, my first CD, which is just called Katrina Leskinich. You can get it on Amazon or on my site, katrinasweb.com. Um, and the reason that I'm saying you get it on my site is that it was very difficult for me to get a record deal, get a good record deal. And I just decided I would go ahead and record it myself, start up my own label and do it. I mean, it's a lot of work. And I think, you know, I have made some wrong choices already. So trying to put things right and learn the whole the whole time as well. I mean, there's a lot of admin, a lot of phone calls and a lot of uh, sign on the dotted line, which, mm. you know, right now I'm just feeling like I just want to get out and go on tour and play and get on that bus and eat fried chicken. I'm just going to have a word with my producer, Tarquin. Tarquin, do you think one of those wrong decisions was coming on this radio show for her? Right? <laughs> <laughs> ah, Walking on Sunshine. Yeah. Well, I think the finest moment for me in the, the life of Walking on Sunshine was when Dolly Parton covered it. Because, you know, that was just, that's something. Well, I used to think maybe you love me. <laughs> and she even changed some of the words and she had... I would pay violins. any money to hear that. She had fiddles going through That's it all. Fabulous. And in, in the video, she had little dan uh, girls dancing with little calico dresses like a, and around uh, stacks of hay. It, uh, yeah, it was wonderful. There have been some... It's been in some interesting and bizarre movies. American Psycho was one. Secret of My Success was great. Michael J. Fox was dancing to it on the treadmill. Um Look Who's Talking was mm. uh, John Travolta was dancing to it so that was a nice moment a nice compliment for you yes did you guys write it our guitar player wrote it Kimberly Rue wrote it yeah so how does that work for you now then if it appears in a movie does it do you any financial benefit now or is that all over well people often ask that I think I must get something down the line but certainly not as many swimming pools as the actual writer right okay so it's all down to the guitarist then pretty much listen it's been a real pleasure talking to you today and uh, I wish you all the best with this um, new campaign really a new part of your life as you say it's incredibly brave to, to bring out a CD by yourself because suddenly you haven't got any of this great big BMG Sony support around you who've got it all sorted out with the PR campaigns and everything it was a brave move I mean are you glad at this point that you did it is it actually too much work producing an album now by yourself I think it's been so interesting seeing how the business actually works and I have a lot more respect for record companies now and I think in the future uh, if and when I am signed with another label I will be able to understand the how the machinery works and have much more compassion with them and try working with them a little bit harder instead of being a sulky brat. Were you a sulky brat at times? Every singer is a sulky brat at one point, yeah. I it's, suppose it's because you think your woes are greater than those of the record company, is it? You do. You end up in your little capsule and the world revolves around you and, uh, yeah, you feel pretty special. But my capsule, or my bubble, if you will, has been well and truly burst and uh, both feet on the ground now, so no more walking on sunshine. <laughs> when you were in that period and that song was so big, um, particularly in the 80s, what was your life like? I mean, was it hedonistic? Was it showbiz? Or is it not like it is today? How, how did you deal with it? It's not like it is today. There were four of us in the group and we all went around as a, a little family. So you're a social retard is what you are because you don't really have any idea of what the real world is like. You're being sheltered from it by all of the, the pack of people around you looking after you and holding your hand through all of these tricky situations that you shouldn't have to deal with mm. you know meanwhile you're checking into your hotel room and complaining that the uh, the mini bar isn't 17 degrees temperature and uh, these pillows are too high I mean we weren't bad we laughed at a lot of other bands who mm. complained and threw strops and believe me there were plenty of them in the 80s we were pretty good compared it was an interesting time for music wasn't it with the uh, boy george culture and all the new romantics and and those guys who were just living life to the full they were sulky and nobody talked to anybody we did so many tv shows and never ever said anything to anybody it just wasn't done it's maybe weird, a, isn't maybe it? a little eye contact you know mm. but that was it
<laughs> Absolutely. Well, listen, I wish you all the best with this new album. Thank it really you. is a beautiful listen. And uh, you can get it through your website, which is... It's katrinasweb.com. Katrinasweb.com. And uh, Katrina uh, will hopefully be back on your radio soon with uh, another hit single. And we hope that uh, this album takes off because it seems now for most performers, it's the way to go. I mean, I was talking, telling you earlier about two of my mates that... Um, there's no way forward now unless you're a huge whopping great big star at the top of your fame to make money out of record companies because their yeah. their job is to make the money isn't it nobody's going to take a chance on you hmm. yeah it's got to be so surefire that I, uh, even the major bands are struggling maybe you two aren't struggling but I think everybody else is alright brilliant to talk to you Katrina Laskanich thank you so much for coming in thanks a lot Alex